Hello developers at DockerCon. I hope I hope you are having a wonderful time learning new things what Docker is bringing for the cloud native developers. I'm Vagish Patel, cloud software architect at Intel, and I'm going to talk about the whole AI developer journey with Intel products like Intel Developer Catalog, Intel Developer Cloud, and OpenWinnow Toolkit. Mostly my focus will be on like uh, how a containerization product from Intel can help developers to uh, enhance their whole development experience, as well as how they can bring, uh, take, their, uh, take their product into the market easily. The mission of our, uh, our organization is how we can uh, reduce the complexity what developers are facing while using Intel hardware and Intel software. We work with a lot of uh, customers, developers, and uh, companies where we work with them, understand the challenges, what they are facing in taking their product to the market, uh, uh, how, what's the development process, and what are the challenges they are facing while developing the product. After understanding their challenges, we engineer the product in a way that can help them easily fix the problem as well as help them to take the product to the market easily. As well as we we work with a lot of developers and understand like what are the uh, user experience, the developer experience uh, pro challenges they are facing, and we work with them on uh, on uh, simplifying and easing the whole process of development to the deployment. We work with a lot of uh, cloud native developers uh, who are developing ap uh, applications for uh, for edge computing and cloud platforms. In this uh, talk, I'm going to discuss about two main products from Intel. One is Intel Developer Cloud. That is a, a platform, a cloud platform designed specifically for developers uh, to develop, build, and uh, test uh, their application on different Intel hardware. And then there is a, a developer catalog, Intel Developer Catalog, which is uh, which is a web UI catalog where all the consolidated list of all the Intel software tools and SDK are listed. So the first thing, as I mentioned, I'm going to talk about Intel Developer Cloud at Edge. Uh, so one of the challenge most of the developers uh, were facing in the industry was uh, if if they have designed their application and if they want to benchmark their performance on different hardware, they need to go ahead and buy different hardware, check what is the performance on different hardware, and then make the right decision what hardware they need to buy. And we want we saw that, that that's a challenge faced by a lot of developers, uh, and we work with a lot of companies, and, uh, and they face a similar kind of uh, issue. So we created an interface where it's, it's a platform where we have hosted uh, uh, different devices from Intel, ranging from core Xeon processors with different accelerator card like a vision processing unit, FPGA, and other things available in, in our Intel data, uh, data center. And any developers can come and test their application and then check the performance of their application. Once they know the performance, they can evaluate like what's the best hardware they want to buy, and then they can make the right decision to purchase this for, for that deployment model. So Intel DevCloud at Edge has their whole software lifecycle where the, a developer can come, uh, develop their containerized as well as uh, application-based software. Today in this talk, I'm mostly concentrating uh, on the containerized software solution, how a developer can come and uh, develop the containerized solution on, on the platform. Uh, Intel have a lot of different devices so that developer can create their solution for different devices like CPU, GPU, VPU, FPGA, and other platforms. Once they develop that solution, they, have, uh, they can go ahead and build that containerized solution directly on the platform. They don't need uh, separate hardware. They don't need uh, to install anything on the on the on the laptop. They can use the browser-based uh, uh, application where they can interact with uh, with the platform, and then they can build their own solution inside the directly on the platform. Uh, that solution they can build for different kinds of uh, verticals, also retail, healthcare, and other market. We also have already pre-built solutions available. So if the developer just wants to try the DevCloud at Edge, 
there are some pre-built solution available which user can check it out uh, I, i'm in the demo i'm going to look into a couple of uh, examples and then the third uh, important step is to test that application once they have developed the application build the application now it's time to test on different hardware so once that application is created they have uh, they can test the same application on 10 different hardware so i'm ranging from uh, uh, 10 is just the number it uh, it can be a lot more hardware but uh, uh, what uh, what hardware we are having is uh, from the uh, from the core platform to xeon platforms with different variety of uh, memory footprints variety of uh, uh, number of cores and different accelerators gpu uh, and different uh, extra add-on hardware now once they test the, their application they can see the performance like what is FPS, what is uh, what is the uh, latency, what is uh, uh, what is the inference time, and all that performance uh, metrics, whatever they uh, they have collected, they can uh, they can download those metrics as well as we have an interface on the telemetry side where they can look into all the metrics uh, uh, from uh, for the user to. And that will help them to make the right decision, like what hardware they need to buy, which is the best uh, cost and performance wise for their uh, deployment. How, how DevCloud at Edge works. So we have uh, five key building blocks for, for, uh, for the users to understand before going into the demo. The first part is the web UI part where uh, we have a browser based system where uh, users don't need to install any extra software. They can use the Chrome browser and interact with the uh, developer container playground uh, with that web UI. There is a development server which is uh, having a Jupyter lab and uh, it's a space for the user to develop their applications inside, uh, inside uh, that server. And then there is a storage where uh, whenever user develop their application everything uh, will be stored in the storage if they build a docker container a docker image it will be stored in the in the storage part of it once the developer is ready uh, with the uh, developed uh, image uh, and application it will be added as a part of the QE, queue and, and this that's a fourth fourth component once uh, the queue uh, will go ahead Take their application and then whatever uh, hardware user have selected, it will wait uh, wait for that hardware to be free. And once that hardware hardware is free, it will deploy that application in the specific required hardware. Uh, those are the five main key building blocks of uh, DevCloud at Edge. There are four different workflows available uh, uh, for uh, for the DevCloud. The first workflow is when developer uh, uh, developer wants to develop their own application, own solution. So we have a Jupyter Lab uh, and uh, uh, OpenVINO Toolkit is pre-installed. OpenVINO Toolkit is uh, is an inference engine designed specifically for Intel hardware to optimize the inference on on, uh, on Intel CPU, GPU, uh, Vision Processing Unit, and FPGA. So that's the first workflow. The next workflow is like uh, uh, the user might have their Docker file or any application source available, uh, maybe in the GitHub or any other source code management. So we have to build option where uh, user can pull those uh, Docker file or, or uh, application directly from the GitHub and build a Docker image out of it and then deploy it on the Intel hardware. The third one is uh, if the uh, developer already have their application available in the form of Helm chart or Docker Compose, or maybe in, in, in a simple Docker, uh, Docker Hub registry or AWS or GCP registry. So that's the third workflow where uh, the application is already available and the developer just wants to test it on different Intel hardware. And the fourth workflow is like uh, the developer wants to understand how the DevCloud at Edge works, and we have end-to-end -end solutions uh, and use cases available in a in a vertical, in, in divided into different verticals and in our marketplace, where user can just take that example and then run it on the DevCloud at Edge infrastructure. 
Now let's go in the demo section where we will see how how a user can uh, develop, uh, build, and test their application in the DevCloud uh, uh, platform. So to access the DevCloud, we can go to devcloud.intel.com. Okay, in that uh, in this page, you will see a lot of different kinds of uh, DevCloud available for different applications. One DevCloud is specifically designed for Intel distribution of OpenMino toolkit. Another is designed for one API. We will look into uh, into the uh, the DevCloud design for uh, OpenMino toolkit, and then uh, there are different kinds of solution you can deploy. Uh, one with the Jupyter Lab, uh, and another which will test it with the bare metal, and another is uh, how we can test it in a containerized solution. So we will uh, click on the launch your containerized solution. Uh, this will take us uh, directly to the DevCloud uh, main dashboard. If you do not have uh, login information, you can go ahead and request uh, uh, for uh, for accessing the DevCloud. Uh, and once you receive that uh, approval uh, request approval, uh, you can go ahead and log in with your credentials. So right now I'm using my credentials to log in. So this is the uh, this is the platform which is known as Container Playground, where uh, user can go ahead and develop, build, and test their application uh, inside uh, this uh, UI. Uh, there are multiple different ways of uh, uh, deploying your application workflow. So I can click on the import resources. And we can see there are a lot of different uh, options available. So first is like container from registry when you already have uh, uh, have a Docker image or uh, uh, available in one of the public or private registry. You can use this option. Uh, we support Kyo.io, AWS, uh, Docker Hub uh, as your NGCP right now. We are expanding on different uh, container registry also. With the private registry, you can provide your credentials uh, directly in the UI and then it will pull the Docker image directly from the registry. There is a way where you can create, import the resource from the directly from the Docker file. You can create and then uh, get all the uh, code from the Docker file and then build the Docker image and then deploy it. There is integration with the Git repository where you can uh, connect with the GitHub and uh, uh, and it can also have like uh, private projects. You can get all that uh, uh, code directly from your GitHub and then build uh, on, on the DevCloud platform. There is a container uh, from DevCloud Marketplace. We will look. Uh, we will look after a couple of minutes, and that is a marketplace available where we have like use cases and end-to-end -end reference implementation. There is a command line import where you can use the CLI to pull the resources from your different registry. There is a Helm chart option where you can deploy your Helm chart on the on this infrastructure, and then there is a Docker Compose uh, option where you have if you have multi a multi uh, container application if you want to deploy on this environment you can use the docker compose option uh, right now for the demo i'm going with the pre uh, uh, pre build images available from the marketplace so i will click on the container from devcloud marketplace and you will see like there are a lot of different examples available here uh, specific from the retail from the industrial section from the healthcare and we have integration with the open we know with the tensorflow and there are reference implementations and uh, many other options available for the user to try it out so right now i'll take the example of people counter system so i can go ahead and use that example i can if i want to view and edit the code of that uh, application i can go ahead and uh, use the jupyter lab to do it but right now just for the simplicity i will click on the launch button to go ahead and launch that application so when I click on the launch button, it will ask me what is the target platform which I want to select. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, Intel have like a lot of different hardware available in the data center. So it is ranging from the Core i3, uh, Core i5, i7, Xeon, and i9. Right now, uh, I'm going to select the one of uh, the 
i7 processor and i can click on the on the launch okay. once i click on the launch it will add the whole application in the queuing system and once that device is available uh, for uh, for me to try it out it will automatically go ahead and take from the queuing system and deploy that application in that uh, in that device so right now it is in a queue uh, queuing mechanism i can see it, it uh, it went into running phase as well as it's, it's completed right now. Uh, I have an option if I click on the on the uh, output, I can go ahead inside the, uh, the file system, and I can see inside the, like what is the result of that uh, output. So there are two ways I can check the output. One is the uh, the video, whatever output generated. So I can click on on the video, and then I can preview it. Let me. Let me maximize it. Yeah. So over here, this is the application for the people counter. So whenever there is a person inside the, the video frame, it will count uh, that person. And over here, you can see the inference time and what are the current count. Okay. So that's one of the output. Also, if I want to check the what is the performance measurement, I can just uh, click on the performance measurement and then I can just have a preview. And I can see over here, it's a throughput is 197 frame per second and latency is uh, 7,018 millisecond. Now, if I want to use the same application and deploy it on another uh, another uh, device, I can, I can go ahead in my library, in the projects, and I can use the uh, people counter system. I can launch it on different hardware. And then I can measure what's the performance uh, of uh, running that application on a different hardware. That's one thing. Uh, also, uh, we have like, in, as a part of the container playground, we have a mechanism to deploy the different kinds of application like Helm chart and expose, uh, expose uh, uh, the, uh, the ports as well as uh, the services for us to view the UI part of it. So let me take an example of intelligent traffic management. This is a, a, a whole reference, implement and re reference implementation, which is designed end to end for, this, uh, for the users to go ahead and use it for the deployment purpose also. If I click on the detail, I can see like what are the container images I'm, I'm downloading, what are the software stack it is having, uh, what is the output I will get? It will expose the different uh, web services and I can see everything in the graph in our dashboard. dashboard. Uh, I can click on the launch. And again, uh, select the different hardware. So I'm selecting the Xeon processors right now. Uh, and I can click on the launch. So whenever I click on the launch, it will also go in the queuing system and then it will start the deployment process. Over here, if you see, there are three different uh, 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 Docker uh, containers which are running. Uh, one is the application, there is an InfluxDB, and there is a Graphena dashboard. Also, it exposes different uh, uh, different services as I mentioned, so I'll, I can go, go, on, go on the Graphena dashboard. I can click on that one. And I can see the whole dashboard is available. I can search for... I can search for the already available dashboard. So there are different dashboards. I can select the uh, main dashboard. And over here you can see it's a intelligent traffic management application where uh, it will show the map UI and it is tracking all that inter, inter, uh, intersection with, with the camera. There are different like how many vehicles detected, pedestrian detected, detected, all that metrics are available in this dashboard. If I want to look into closer, have a closer look into like what's going on at that intersection, I can just click on that one. It will open a different dashboard where I can see 
uh, what's going on at that intersection or is there any collision or any vehicle detected and if there is any collision it will automatically call the emergency system uh, uh, emergency medical system so that's that's one part uh, everything, the, all the output and everything, if I want to see like what's going on in the graph in a dashboard or in fact, like I have a uh, mechanism where I can see the output, everything over here. So all the logs, everything is generated over here. And also that uh, all the logs are also stored in one of my file system, where if I, in the future, if I want to go ahead and see uh, running this application, what was the performance, uh, what was the output, I can look into those outputs also. So Intel is also working with Docker Hub uh, to host all the Docker images uh, as a verified publisher uh, on, on the uh, Docker uh, Hub re uh, registry. You can uh, find all the images on uh, hub.docker.com. Let's choose this less in depth. And this is a space where all the Docker images are hosted as a verified publisher. Uh, you can find all the images from uh, uh, for the AI, HPC, IoT, edge computing workloads. Uh, uh, in this example, I'm going to take a, a simplified example of uh, video analytics serving. So I'll search for Intel slash video. video. Let me search for video analytics serving. Yeah. And over here, you can see that uh, we have published a video analytics serving uh, uh, Docker image. This is based on OpenVINO toolkit and it provides a way. Uh, to, uh, to have inference as a service mechanism. So I'll take this example. I'll just copy uh, copy the name of the Docker image. Okay. I will come on the container playground. I'll go ahead, click on the import resource. I will click on con uh, container from the registry. I will create a new project and name it as grass. I'll click on create. And then for the container URL, I will provide it as like docker.io, that's a Docker Hub registry. And I can provide like uh, the namespace Intel and video analytics survey. And I can provide like latest tag. Okay. It will go ahead and verify that it, it is uh, supported or not. Once I have added the container URL, I'll provide the container name. I will go with VS demo and I can click on the import. It will go ahead and validate the Docker image and import it in my local Docker, uh, uh, lo local Docker registry. Also, I can add more configuration like uh, port mapping, volume binding, and other environment variable information inside the UI itself. So right now I'll go with the port 8080 file system. I will have a temporary file system, which is mapped to the temporary file system of the Docker image. Uh, don't, no dependency, no environment variable. I can save this configuration. Okay, so that project is created. Now I have an option to launch it. And while launching, I, I, I can select what type of hardware I want to select. I'll select the 11th generation. I can click on the launch. Once it is launched, it will go into queuing stage and then it will be deployed to the specific hardware and, and then it will be in a running state. I can use that uh, as an inference as a service uh, for the open window toolkit directly in the dev cloud playground. Okay. Uh, that's uh, that's uh, the end of dev cloud uh, container playground demo. Uh, there are other uh, other uh, resources and other mechanism of developing and uh, building uh, different containerized workload. So I hope uh, uh, everyone will uh, get a chance to go ahead and try those uh, uh, different workloads and uh, uh, and explore what what the container play, uh, playground is.
so as we have looked that uh, in the dev cloud uh, you can uh, deploy your workload you can test your workload and then uh, you can test different types of application we we saw an example of intelligent traffic management and uh, if you want to try those type of example in your local device or maybe local edge computing device you can come to dev catalog page where uh, you can find all the softwares uh, and toolkits and sdks uh, uh, targeted our uh, different uh, verticals like um, Internet of Things, Edge Computing, uh, Cloud Platform, AI Developers, uh, uh, High Performance Computing Developers, and many other uh, uh, focused developers. Uh, over there, you will find a lot of softwares, uh, for example, optimized uh, libraries for the TensorFlow, for the PyTorch, OpenVINO, many end-to-end -end reference implementations like you can just take them and then deploy it on your on your uh, uh, production devices uh, so all the software is ranging uh, from uh, from uh, uh, standalone software to the containers to the helm chart everything is available under uh, one platform called intel developer catalog so as we have uh, seen in the uh, in the dev cloud intelligent traffic management i'll show you a quick demo how you can go ahead and search for intelligent traffic management on intel developer catalog uh, platform go to developer.intel.com slash dev catalog okay once you're in this dev catalog you will see a lot of different uh, uh, applications available over here and you can uh, search for the containers or any other applications okay. for quickly searching over here i can search for inter intelligent uh, traffic management okay. and you will see the same uh, application that's wireless ready uh, intelligent traffic management is available in, in this platform. So you can go ahead and download that application and try it on your local device. So this is a very quick demo of uh, Intel Developer Catalog. I hope you like this session. Uh, here are a few links which can which you can use to access the platform uh, for DevCloud at Edge and Dev Catalog. Feel free to reach out uh, to me for any questions or any feedback. Uh, I have provided my email ID as well as uh, URL for my LinkedIn profile. Thank you very much.